Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and this is the New Horizons port probe, which recently sped past Pluto, which of course looks nothing like the model in game since it surprised everyone. Now, this thing is of course heading off into the outer reaches of the solar system. It will pass by some Kuiper Belt objects, ideally, and collect more data. It will continue to transmit data home for the next uh, 16 months or so. But uh, one question remains. What would it take to bring New Horizons back home to Earth? Well, the great thing is Kerbal Space Program lets us attempt to answer these questions by providing us the tools to simulate astrodynamics and rockets. So we're going to attach a maneuver node up here just to figure out what it would take to take Pluto, uh, sorry, New Horizons from its current orbit and return it to the inner solar system. Now, we're not going to return it to Earth just yet, but if we can make it fly through the inner solar system, we can pick it up with another improbable vehicle. So I'm just going to apply a retrograde thrust to slow its orbit down. And uh, as you see, we get it into a closed orbit. And then with a little bit of more work, we get it down to an orbit that comes relatively close to the Earth. 168 million kilometers from the Sun, which is just about outside uh, Earth's in orbit, but inside Mars's orbit. And for that, it takes about 17 kilometers per second of delta V if we were to make the maneuver today. However, because of the nature of traveling around the solar system, we aren't able to get to it right away. Now, if that's a node 15 years from now, that's actually a rough estimate. Perhaps the real New Horizons is elsewhere. Um, yeah, 25 years, uh, 30 years. I think giving it three decades to get out there is quite reasonable. You'll notice that we still get down into the inner solar system with about 17 kilometers per second of delta V. So we're going to need an upper stage that can do that. So, we've got to build our spacecraft that does this. We need 17 kilometers per second when we are pushing New Horizons about. So we need our probe at the core of this. We also are going to need some like reaction control so that we can actually perform a rendezvous and, you know, basically clutch it, grab it from the sky. And to actually grab it, we're going to need the claw. The claw has the New Horizons has no docking capability of its own. So this is what we're going to use to grab it and hopefully not scuff up the paintwork too much. Next, obviously, let's let's build out our spacecraft completely. We need these little RCS thrusters. Which one shall I use? I'll use this one because it looks like it has more thrusters. It has thrusters on the thrusters. And that's great. And then on top of this, one thing I am going to need is power out there. Out in the outer edge of the solar system, we cannot use solar power. So let's use some radio thermal generators. I'm, I'm just going to stick four of them on there because I suspect that by the time we get there, these things will be running at a low ebb due to the natural decay of radioactive materials. Now, also, we're going to need to, we're going to need a battery to store power, or maybe not, I don't know, we'll just stick one on there, why not? This is a procedural part so we can scale it up by right clicking, and there, 1.25 meter. That's actually probably bigger than we'd need, but let's just over accommodate. No, 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 we are going to build, what I'm going to do is simulate this thing carrying New Horizons. So I'm going to use these struts to build out a little rig on the side that will hold New Horizons model and let us calculate all our delta V as if we were pushing the real spacecraft. Now, obviously, we will remove this once we're calculating the rest of the rocket, but initially we need to account for the mass of this spacecraft. And this thing does not want to go on there straight. Thank you very much. Okay, now right click, or now alt click is how I'm copying these parts. Alt click is the most common feature. People say, How do you do that? Hold alt and left click on the item. And uh, now here we go, we're looking for the probe here, under the yeah, US of our probes. Now this whole thing is about two tons, so let's start building out a spacecraft and we're going to use hydrogen, hydrogen oxygen fuel because hydrogen and oxygen fuel provide the most efficient rocket that we can manage. So procedural tanks is what we want, procedural fuel tank, stick that on there. And now we want to find a very efficient rocket. Let's uh, find rockets somewhere. We want to find a rocket that uses hydrogen oxygen. And there, there's going to be a lot of right looking at the right click to see what type of fuel it is. And specifically, I'm looking at engine ISP, which is a specific impulse. You want that to be as high as possible. 
And that's Vulcan. Oh wait, uh, okay, that one, this one, non-RP. These non-RP zero is basically non-realistic progression, which is supposed to provide a realistic thing. Oh, this one has 447. I like it. It is rather big though. Um, let's just use it nevertheless. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Go on, attach there. Okay, this this may look a little unwieldy, to, but uh, it might actually be exactly what we need. <laughs> but let's look for some other rockets while we're here, just in case. No, that's these are all the wrong type of fuel. I I what? How big? How heavy does it say? It says two point two. Surely that thing doesn't weigh two point two tons. That doesn't make any sense at all. Um. Either the engineer report is broken or this engine is broken. Never mind. Let's just let's just go with it. Whatever. If it weighs two hundred kilograms, I'm okay with that. Okay. So we've now got four hundred and fifty-four meters per second. But all I can do is expand this out, make this engine bigger, and you see that my delta V is starting to increase. This is the window in the top right. You can see delta V going up. Now remember, I need seventeen. So look, we've just built this thing out. It's like let's make it ten meters long. Why not ten meters? And that gets us. 10 kilometers per second. That's actually pretty good. Of course, it's a long way from being ideal. And what we're going to have to do is build some staging into this. And thanks to the power of post editing, uh, old me can natter away for several minutes while new me actually goes and starts to copy this whole thing out and expand it into a much larger asparagus staged upper stage. Now, if you remember, asparagus staging is where you have multiple uh, fuel tanks wrapped around a common core and they all drop off in pairs so that you're essentially dropping off the least amount of mass at every stage and making the whole thing ultimately more efficient. It is, however, a nightmare to actually get the thing piped up in real life and therefore it is not used at this time. Although you do get fuel crossfeed used in a couple of places in rocketry. Eventually, however, I begin to start to think about further stages to push this out towards the target and realize, you know what, maybe I can make these things bigger. Well, actually, maybe it will be better if I make these things bigger. So I double their length out to 20 meters. And you see now that our total delta V is about 17.5 kilometers per second, which is more than our goal. Of course, we're still going to have to rendezvous this ginormous mess. This is over, it's almost a thousand tons of rocket that we have to rendezvous with New Horizons in deep space. So extending the tanks doesn't really make a huge amount of difference. What matters is the number of stages here. And, and you can see up here the amount of delta V you get per stage. The last stage gets us like 11.3 kilometers per second, but the stage before that, which has twice as much fuel in it, I'll point out, only gets you 4.2, and then as you go down, you get less. That's just under 2, just under 1.4. The fundamental problem with rockets is that the exhaust velocity that you're getting from your engines is the most important, most critical factor. If I right click on this, I can show in the GUI, it says the specific impulse is 447. And you can convert that number into an average exhaust velocity, how fast the gases are escaping, by multiplying it by the acceleration due to gravity. So you multiply it by 9.8 and you'll get just over 4 kilometers per second. You're going to get Mach 13. Well, that's obviously Mach 13 as measured in air rather than the water which is in the exhaust. So, you know, adding more stages is just going to make this number go up very, very slowly. The only real way to get that kind of velocity out of it is by taking this engine and replacing it with something more efficient, such as this Nerva NRX nuclear engine. Now, they did actually develop a nuclear engine, but it never flew in space. And right away, these numbers are looking a little crazy here. Let's, uh, let's actually just look at the GUI on this. And it tells us that the engine specific impulse goes up to 925. So what we need to do, of course, is re remove these tanks and replace them with proper tanks, 100% liquid hydrogen. 100%, 100%. And now it's time for another accelerated sequence where I try to build this thing out and magically change all the numbers, convert all the tanks into pure liquid hydrogen, which 
is unfortunately rather low density, which means you need very, very big tanks. I start by extending the tanks out to 50 meters and get my total delta V up to about 20 kilometers per second, which I decide isn't enough. So I, I extend the tanks further still to be 100 meters long, making them taller than most rockets. But even with the magnificent efficiency of the nuclear engines, soon we are bouncing up against that a law of diminishing returns and the tyranny of the rocket equation once again rears its ugly head. Okay, so 25 kilometers per second from this. And of course, when we get there, we still have to dock this thing. Actually, the, the way to make these things work is to take the have the spacecraft on the nose uh, undock, go and pick up New Horizons, come back and then attach itself to the drive system. But by that point we would have lost two of these external tanks as well. So the, yeah, so we're still a long way short. Remember what we're gonna need, and let's be clear, we're gonna need about uh, 18 kilometers per second leaving Earth, so we have to get that off of Earth. Then when we get to New Horizons several years later we'll probably need about five to rendezvous depending upon how well we've chosen our orbit maybe we'll need more than that um and then we're going to need about 16 to slow the whole thing down so you know you're easily talking at over 40 to 50 kilometers per second depending upon how aggressive you want you're not doing this with conventional rocket fuels the good news is that modern technology does actually provide an even more efficient engine in the form of the ION engine. Now, if you right click on this, the ION engine gets us 3100, which means an exhaust velocity of um, over 30 kilometers per second, which is pretty good. What does this run on? This runs on something called xenon, which is an inert gas that is very, very, very expensive because it's rare. But we are sparing no expense to bring back New Horizons, the hero of exploration or something like that. Now, we have the Xenon container here. We can attach this to it and uh, so actually what that gets us, if we put Xenon gas into it, is 3.8 kilometers per second. That is with the space probe attached. Let's scale this up a bit to 2.5 meters. Oh, and we get 21 kilometers per second. That that, my friends, will satisfy. Now, the only thing here is it relies on these radiothermal generators, which the model is currently a little broken. That's what we're seeing here is something called Z fighting or Z fighting, depending upon which side of the Atlantic or region you come from. It's basically where the, the, the buffer, the Z buffer that figures out how far away each pixel is, has two items at exactly the same distance and it swaps back and forth upon them based randomly on the order that they were rendered on the screen. Regardless, we can now take this off because this is our final Pluto into our, our New Horizons intercept stage. Now, all we need to do is get this whole thing up to a magnificent, you know, 18, 20 kilometers per second launching from Kerbin. And so, once again, it's a narration job for new me, as old me works in super fast time, building everything as quickly as possible. Exploiting all the procedural parts provided by the, the system. And now, there's another thing i got to point out, is that we're talking centuries in flight for many of these things. First of all, realism overhaul adds a number of uh, decay problems. Radiothermal generators begin to lose their power over time. Nuclear engines, if you use nuclear engines, you'll find out that those engines start to lose uh, uranium so that they don't work uh, after a certain amount of time. In fuels, if you have cryogenic fuels, depending upon how hot the part is, you will find things like liquid hydrogen boiling off. Liquid hydrogen has to be kept at around 20 Kelvin which is pretty small, and it generally evaporates much faster than liquid oxygen, which is much warmer, relatively speaking. Yes, those most efficient of rocket fuels will actually evaporate from your tanks in, uh, if you have the right set of configurations or the right set of mods in Kerbal Space Program, or if you, say, are dealing with real life. I'm guessing the good news is that xenon being quite heavy is actually easier to contain, I would imagine, than, say, liquid hydrogen. It's also quite heavy, so it, it won't, you know, percolate through membranes and things like that. Yeah, look at the size of this tank. We're using the Saturn V engine cluster on this thing here. That is five F1 engines there. 
The Saturn V engines are not the most efficient by any means. They run on kerosene and oxygen and were designed by a process of trial and error, but they are big and very powerful. Okay, so with all that, um, we're probably ready to go. We are ready to launch this sucker. So what I need to do, of course, is launch and simulate the vessel. And I'm actually going to do... Um, was it 12 hours from now? 12, zero, 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 zero. I think that'll work. Simulate it, just to make sure that it's daytime, because I noticed it was nighttime in previous attempts. Daytime is obviously far more acceptable from a camera point of view. But here we go, simulator. Yo dog, I hear you like simulators. So I put a simulator in your simulator so you can simulate while simulating. Look, look at this thing. It's taller than the vehicle assembly building. Is that not absolutely stunning? Okay, we're gonna launch, and I'm immediately gonna turn this thing over because I'm pretty sure the whole thing is just gonna fall over and crush the vehicle assembly building. And yes, time for more time acceleration. Yeah, I'm frankly amazed that the launch pad wasn't crushed by the mass of this thing, which was something about 5,000 tons of launch. Bigger than, bigger than a Saturn V, obviously, and uh, the upper stage is mostly hydrogen and oxygen with a big chunk of xenon in that final rendezvous and capture stage. The whole thing would probably freeze solid by the time it reaches the space program. I mean, really, the, there's no way to power these things in super deep space. The radiothermal generators would probably break down by the time they got there. I'm not sure about flying a nuclear reactor into deep space for centuries at a time. I'm pretty sure they wouldn't handle it very well. Regardless, I made a bit of a hash of the launch. I initially turned over too quickly, and then I corrected, and then I turned over too slowly, and then it got time for stage separation. It doesn't matter, I'm just gonna keep this thing going. And wait for these stages to go. P-band is almost gone. And I should probably throttle this thing down a little. Oh yeah, wait, this engine probably isn't that throttleable, is it? I wonder if it'll destroy the entire spacecraft when I eject these solid rocket boosters. Let's let's find out. I'm gonna wait until this fuel is almost out. Now, yes. Well, I guess New Horizons isn't coming home after all. The design does need optimized, and my launch profile needs optimized a little. Regardless. This is why we're not bringing spacecraft home, and this is why we're not putting a spacecraft into orbit around Pluto. This is why we flew it past. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.